Hey guys! Hello! Hey! Happy Sunday! Welcome back to another Be Free Sunday! <laughs> I think that's what I need to call it. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, it's still Women Empowerment Well, this is for Women Empowerment, but it's still International Women's Month, right? So that's why I've been doing these on Sundays. And guys, I have fun! Girl, Jackie, 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 Jackie with me. Eh, 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 eh. So <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching the live. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone that are watching the replay. I am Natasha Rivera. For those of you that do not know me, and I help women redesign their lives so that they can prioritize their health, their well-being, live unapologetically, and cultivate a joyful life. I'm also the creator of this community, Be Free Society, and I am so grateful to have you with us tonight. Tonight, we are going to talk about we're going to talk about leaping with boldness, y'all. We are getting into it tonight, right, Jackie? Right on. That's right what on. we're going to talk about tonight. So um, now that I've introduced myself, I'm going to pass the mic to my sis. Go on, Jackie. Tell the people who you are. Tell them who you are. First of all, I want to thank Natasha for having me. Um, when she reached out to me, shot me a text, said, hey, you can think about it. I thought for one second. And said, absolutely, I'm here. I want to do this. I want to talk. Um, I don't know. And I'm skipping ahead already. And I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> but um, Natasha and I, um, and she's going to talk a little bit about how we met. But we talked a while ago, um, before any of Should Have Been a Book and Be Free and all this stuff, about one day we were going to have a collaboration. We did. And we did. We, were, we did. Years and ago. So years ago. And that our voices were, and I'm going to get all teary in this. I've only been speaking less than a minute, but we have spoken it into fruition and all the things that we went through, you and I are sitting here in our houses after seven o'clock in March of 2023, doing what we had envisioned for ourselves years ago. Mm -hmm. So I just am so thankful that we're here together tonight. So anyway, okay, before I get on. I love this, you, I love you. Um, I started this blog on January 7th of 2023. Come on. Um, it was a long time, long time coming, ladies. Um, my mom passed in 1994. And I, the day she passed, I had this vision of her and her life. And I even down to the book cover of what this book should have looked like. And she died in 1994, like I said. And every so often I would think, I need, to, I need to write this book. And I would start and all these painful memories would come up. And um, long story short, it just never got done. And I think everybody out there knows what that feeling is when you know you have something, a purpose, something on your spirit that drags you when you don't accomplish it. You don't start it. You don't do it. You're carrying it around. Finally, I said, you know what? I, no matter what it looks like, I got to do something. That I gotta, part. <laughs> I got to do it. I got to quit talking about it. I got to quit hiding from it. I've got to be, be vulnerable. So I just did it. And I'm still, it's a work in progress, but I'm getting her story out there. I feel like I'm connecting with people, not just women, but men. And I'm sharing something that I should have shared a long time ago. 
Um, so my mission with this whole thing is to be bold, be bold in all things, whether it's your relationships, it's your work life, it's with your kids, it's with new experiences, it's with walking through what you are meant to do in this life, but be bold about it. Start it. Don't sit on it any longer. So in a nutshell, that's what I've, I'm starting to um, bring to the table. I want people to hear my story and why it took me so long. Um, <clears throat> I don't focus on the why it took me so long anymore as to I'm doing it now. That part, that's the only part that matters. And that's the, that's the good thing about leaping. That's Will right. you leap? You're not even in the same place you were before you leap, right? That right. So I'm just so proud of you and I'm excited for your journey. And gosh, we've had have had some talks about this. Um, but before we get any deeper, guys, um, we are using StreamYard. So if you give StreamYard permissions, we will be able to see your name and your beautiful faces. And then we'll be able to also greet you by your name instead of calling you a Facebook user. <laughs> So I see Brittany here. Good evening, Brittany. Hi, I Brittany. also see Jen is here. Hey, Jen. Hey, Jen. We shout you guys out. And Powerhouse has come in the building, honey. Miss Evelyn, honey. Yes. Hi, and I have Facebook user. So, hey, everyone. Thank you guys for being here again tonight. Um, we really are excited to talk. And again, these talks are it's just raw girl talk. We're just having, we're just a vibe. It's a vibe. That's what I always want these talks to be about. I don't do stuffy and all that, that routine stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, it's all God led, but I believe that you can be a woman of faith and be really dope. You can be really fun. And um, that is the type of Christian I am anyways. But anyway, um, Jackie, we're going to get into this story, how we met, because you really love telling this story. You know what? Because who would have thought, who would have thought, really? Now, ladies, you all need to hear this. So what year was it? Because you know I'm not good with oh, years. Oh, nine is when I, oh, nine, I think it was. It was oh, nine when I started working with you. Okay. So it had so to and, be. And it had to be oh, nine, because it was not short. It was shortly right. after. So. I decided one day I was going to go to Kohl's, the department store, and return a shirt. And I'm standing in the line, and right next to me is Natasha and her friend. And her spirit captured me. And she said, hey, I like that shirt, blah, 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 blah. And um, I was like, oh, hey. And we hit it off. And I, I kind of joke, but I really am serious. Like, I want to to have her phone number. Cause I was like, I <laughs> love her spirit. Like I went to my car and I felt so good after talking to her. And I'm like, why don't, why don't I have people in my life? Like I, I need this person, uh -huh. so, but we had just hit it off. We were just in line chit chatting. And I, we, I don't even know if we hugged, but I don't know. There was a, I think we did. Cause you know, I'm a hugger. I'm, I'm a hug. Everybody. Don't get, me spirit, right? those hugs. don't get me started on those hugs. <laughs> don't. So I don't even know how long after that encounter at Kohl's did we meet at work? I would say it probably was like two weeks because I believe I was shopping for work for to start the new job. Okay. So then I think at the time your supervisor was bringing you around, introducing mm -hmm. you to people. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I was like, no way. This is the lady I met. Like I was so excited. And we had already known from that brief interaction at Kohl's that that we were in it to get like we hit it off so well yeah. yeah and we just connected like we were friends after that and we've remained friends um natasha's my friend that we don't see each other often um her kids went to a lake forest my kids my son went to cr we were in different circles but whenever we needed one another whenever it, it was without question. And those are the kind of relationships that I need in my life. And you know, there's no judgment. She has seen me dance some crazy foolishness. Oh. <laughs> Name. <laughs> she's, she's been there. And we just, we just, she's seen me in struggles. I've seen her in struggles. Um, and I'm so, hold on. Somebody keeps blowing up my phone. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead on and pause that. I, I would have thought I silenced it, but I didn't. Um, but 
I don't even know where I was, but you and I, like, we just have always been there for each other without question. And, um, you know, Natasha's always talking about what brought her to this place. And I know for a fact that it was time for Natasha to get out of the situation that she was in. And when she took the leap, because we're talking about that bold I'm not leaping. boldly, <laughs> that was a bold move. Jackie, can I just say sure. it, it wasn't the employer that you guys hear me talking about now. No, no. It was the employer before the one I just left. But that one still stressed my life, too. <laughs> it, it, yeah. But that was like a different stress. Yeah. You had a whole other level. Right. Like you went to the one when you the left. The other me. one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she left me and I was very sad when she left me. But she really didn't leave me. But, you know, I had to make her feel a little guilty for leaving. <laughs> um, But when I tell you that she was at a low, she was at the lowest point. And for my girl to call me in the place that she was, I knew something had to change. Mm -hmm. And I am, you guys don't even know when I see this girl tude, when I <laughs> see this be free, when I see all the things that she is doing as a friend and as a sister, mm, it just does so much to me because I know where she came from. So when, when I talk about in my blog about being bold, that's an example of being bold. Um, now, I'm not saying everybody needs to quit their job and start a business. I'm not saying that. But you might. But you might. <laughs> you but might. I like to talk about, Listen. you know, we're all in different places in our life, mm -hmm. right? So for me, being bold was right now starting this blog. Like I had to do this. Um, being bold for you in your life right now might mean you're standing up for yourself in a toxic relationship. Or it may mean that you're, you know, kind of having some depression or anxiety and you're being bold is just getting up and getting dressed for the day. Mm -hmm. So we're all in different places in our life. So being bold may mean something different to you as it does for me, but it means stepping out of your comfort zone, no matter yes. what that is, because yes. we get stuck there and that holds us back from what our purpose is. So mm -hmm. be bold, get out there, try new things. And let me tell you something. Tell us um, talk, talk to the people. <laughs> <laughs> when, so when my mom was alive and you guys, I would love for you, and we're going to talk about a little bit more to check out my blog because it is all about my mom and how I was raised. And um, she's the one that always used to tell me, you got to be bold, Jackie. You got to have that godly boldness. Um, be respectful, but you have to be bold. And so when she passed away, when I was 21, that always stuck with me. And throughout my journey, my, I married my high school sweetheart, which was very bold because nobody wanted us to get married. And right. I was 18 and I was like, I'm doing what I'm going to do. Exactly. Um, so that was a bold move on my part. Um, we went to, we lived in California for a couple of years. We moved to Maryland and we were trying to get orders back to the East Coast because my mom was so sick. So she passed. We got orders like three or four months after she had passed. We're in Maryland I start working at a youth center and I was the before and after care coordinator and the youth director had left and the big boss at the Navy base came to me and said, you don't have a degree and you're very young, but I think you should apply as the youth director because you have done such a great job with these, um, this before and after care program and all these other programs they put me in charge of. So I actually was writing about this in my blog yesterday. That's why it's so fresh and I'm going to publish it this week. But so long story short, I apply. It's a lottery. So they take the two to three best candidates and then it's a lottery. Well, it's mm -hmm. not a lottery. Mm -hmm. me because God's in charge of my right. life. Okay. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> um, okay. um, so I remember the big boss driving towards me. I was checking on a group of kids at this field trip and she has the biggest smile. And she said, you won the lottery. She's like, you are going to be the youth director. I was like in my early twenties. So not only did I apply when everybody told me not to, because they said I was too young and that I didn't have a degree. I was bold. Yeah. And I said, you yeah. know what, what's it going to hurt? 
Yep. Why What's not? Why not? Just put your name in. Did became the youth director. Um, I was running all of the youth programs for the Navy base in my early 20s. Um, and that's just a little example of your bold, you know, your bold leap. Right? Right? Yeah. And you can't let people tell you what you are not qualified to do, because I know what God has for me is. isn't what man is telling me I'm qualified for. Right. So that that's where your boldness comes in. Because mm -hmm. you have to think bigger than what everybody's telling you. Way bigger. Jackie, yeah. so Brittany said that before you even said it. So you guys are on one accord. She says, wow, God qualifies the qualified. Yeah, un the unqualified. He really, really does. does. And um, leaping, really, the definition of leaping, it means to spring free from. Like, to be free from a thing. And that thing is even yourself. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Sometimes you need to be free from yourself because yeah. we can be our own worst enemy. Like I say it all the time, our biggest enemy is our inner me. Absolutely. And bold people aren't afraid to do risky things. Bold people are courageous. They're confident. They're fearless. They are ready to take risks. They are ready to do things and unapologetically, they do things that other people don't want to do. They don't care what people got to say. And they say, like, I'm going to do me. Me. Yeah. Me. <laughs> like me, right? I can care less what people have to say about me. Now, once upon a time in my life, I did. But yeah. look, people don't have a heaven and hell to put me in. So I'm going to as well do the thing that God called me to do. Because um, at the end of the day, when I'm standing before him, He's the only one that can give me a well done. No one on earth. People can give me flowers, right? But no one can give me that well done and no one can say enter, <laughs> okay? No one's going to call me thy good and faithful servant, but God. So do the things like Jackie said. Be bold in all things. Start it. Stop trying out for excuses, right? And I have a similar um, story like Jackie, and I love that you shared that, and thank you for sharing that when you took that coordinator, that position, right, the director position, because again, I did the same thing when I left the the place where we would work together to go to the previous employer that I just left in 2020. I was an admin, I was an administrative assistant, and I had done that type of work. Um, until I became a supervisor. So here at this position, I've been doing this supervisor role for years. My main supervisor that I love, um, the one that hired me for the position where I work at with Jackie, worked at with Jackie, um, <clears throat> uh, she retired after three years. And so I had two other supervisors after her and I trained both of them. Yes, she did. Trained both of them. And one of <laughs> one at one time, the um, they asked me, did you want, do you want the job? I was like, absolutely not. I don't need this pressure. I don't need the stress here. A position came up at the old employer and I went there. That was my bold leap. And you know, people were like, you don't have a degree, guys. I don't have a college degree to first, but just like Jackie, <laughs> you can, you can dictate what God's going to do in my life. And mm -hmm. if I did not leap, if I did not have the faith, to even go for it. If I allowed people around me to discourage me, I never would have taken that leap because what that job, yes, it stressed my life, but what it afforded me to do with my family was to get out of financial debt. Mm -hmm. It allowed us to do things in our home that we wanted to do. It set us up for now, right? Um, so when, when we say leap, like for real, sometimes you just have to shut your eyes shut your brain off and just go for it. Like literally, like you see, uh, one of my girlfriends, she'll send me like this, um, a GIF and it's literally someone like jumping off a cliff. You have to be bold. <laughs> like that. Yes. Cause too many of us, like I've been guilty, Jackie, I don't know about you, I've been really like super guilty of overthinking everything. What are you thinking about? It's on your heart. It is yeah. not going to leave you. Yeah. Just like you said about your blog, years, Jackie. That was over 30 years. It uh, was 30 girl. years. And That's let me tell you, that was like a weight I was pulling. And the day that January 7th, when I sat down and I said, you know what? You don't know everything you need. You don't know everything about blogging. You don't know 
a lot about the situation here, but you do know what you have in your mind and your heart and what you've been told to do. Now get on it and do it. Get on it. And the release that I had that day is undescribable. It was something that I felt like a thousand pounds lighter mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I had carried it around. Now, now because I'm a thinker <laughs> and, and I, I did name my blog should have been a book, but now I'm like, God, should it have been a book? Mm. Because <laughs> it could still be a book. But I always, but I, I think back because where I'm at in my life at 50 years old is very different from when I was 20 in my 20 twenties. So now I feel like I have so much more in me to give and I have tougher skin. Like mm -hmm. I don't care what people think. Right. So I'm out here putting all my business on this blog and <laughs> me and this group girl, I'll be having a good old time. I'll be like, listen, yeah. in my story, Hoarding my story don't set nobody free. It don't Absolutely. help nobody get free, and it doesn't. Hoarding it helps. It serves no one. Absolutely. And Absolutely. We went through these things so that we can help others. The things we go through ain't even about us, but we over here tripping over going through trials and tribulations. The Bible yes. says clearly there will be trials and tribulations, but you know it's not going to overtake us, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do the thing for the people. Go Dude. through the suffering. And the Bible says, after you've suffered a while, go back and strengthen your brother, right? That's right. But that's what Jackie and I are doing. We are, we've suffered <laughs> different ways. And all of you that are watching have suffered or will suffer in some way, shape, or form. Yep. And it's not, don't take it personal. It yep. is not about you. It is about the ones that we are called to. Once you grasp that concept, Things will get a lot easier. I bucked and I bucked and I bucked. I had people say, you should do that. And I'm like, man, I ain't trying to do that. And I would hide. Jackie, you know, I'm like hiding. you be like, girl, you should do that. And I ain't doing that. I don't want no parts. You know why? Because I didn't want, I didn't want to agitate any situations. I like my little calm and peace. I was like, yes. no, stuff, the storms are going to come if I'm out there. But you know what? They're going to come even more if you don't. Yeah. So you might as well. If I am going to be not miserable, if I'm going to be uncomfortable, I'd rather be uncomfortable in the will of God, doing the thing that he called me to do, than to be uncomfortable in disobedience. That's right. And there, I'd and rather I be uncomfortable like, in obedience. And there, and I think those are two levels of uncomfortability. Girl, talk and about I can it. be out into the world and be uncomfortable. And that's a whole other feeling <laughs> of when God yes, makes you uncomfortable. It'll tear you up. It'll, it'll tear you up. It will. It will. And I feel like we all, all of us, every single one has something inside of us that it, it's our God given purpose. I don't care what it is. If it, photography, cooking, like whatever you is your got shoestrings, it don't matter. If you call to it, you can do it. Then you do it and you listen <laughs> to your heart. And, you know, every time I would go to write that book, I would get to my dad was an alcoholic for 12, the first 12 years of my life. And I saw so many things that a little girl should not see. And I pushed it down. And even as an adult, I didn't even I kind of just ex accepted that that was my childhood and that mm -hmm. I was strong and that I worked through it. And I tell you what. I had an ugly cry when I started this blog because mm. for the first time in 50 years, I actually thought about what that little girl went through. And I was on my treadmill because, you know, January 7th, I started my uh, blog, but I also started this eating healthy. I'm doing it all at once. Let's get so, it. Let's get it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ugly crying, snot just coming out. Mm. Can't breathe crying. Just can't breathe mm -hmm. and try another release because I finally was like, I get it. Like, I, and I've always been that person. Push it down. Keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. Don't, I'm good. Like, I, no, no. Like, I needed to feel that emotion. I need to, needed to get that out. And I feel like, again, that was me being bold and finally saying, you did go through these things and it was hurtful. But you know what? It's not going to keep you there. You're going to you're going to grow. You're going to become what you were meant to be, despite 
what you went through as a, as a child. Yeah. And, you know, but God, because if I didn't have God in my life, I don't even know where I would be. I wouldn't be sitting here. I'll tell you that right now. Listen, that makes two of us. You said something, Jackie, you said that as you began to write, right. Um, I feel like it was your breakthrough and a healing in a sense, like to feel like there was a healing because you had a moment where you said you could process it. Um, Jack, Brittany said, God sets us up for future. He sees for us. Yes, he does. Veronica's talking. She said, yes, that's me always overthinking. Yeah. That overthinking will wreck you. Like it, it will wreck you. Shakira's like, yes, yes, Shakira. <laughs> I love her and her pretty self. Um, yes. So true, Veronica. So, that is like the breakthrough moment when you are faced with, when you have to face your past, but maybe you could not have done it 30 years prior because you weren't ready. You weren't, you know, you had to go through a few more things for it. And I feel like that happened to me also for me to leap into my now, right? Um, I had to go through some more processing. I had to go through some more refining. I had to go through some more healing so that when God put me before the people, I didn't hurt the people. I could really legitimately help them from a healed place. So healing really is important, but I will tell you what, staying stuck, you're not healing and stuck. You're not going to heal in part. The Bible clearly says as they went, they were healed. As they went, healing requires movement, action, motion, go. Yes. Like you can't sit and park. I, I do believe there's a season because I had it on a time that will you will be able to sit and process and go through and sit with your emotions and work through that. I feel that. But I also feel that the more that I go, I'm going to talk for myself now, Jackie. And I know you can probably feel this because every time you write, it's a release. It's another level of healing that you get because you're dealing with your little girl. And that's what a lot of us have not tapped into the little girl. And that little girl, that hurt little girl, we all have her. I don't yeah. care what your life look like now. All of us have been broken some kind of way. And our little girl is shook. And until we sit and, and, and let her heal, she's going to always affect our grown woman. Mm hmm. Always. Because when we react, it's not the grown woman that it's your little girl in there having a temper tantrum because she really want to heal and you keep suppressing her. Yeah. Let her deal with her yeah. so that you can go and do the thing. But you can't just sit forever, mm -mm. sit forever mm -mm. and think you're just going to heal in that place forever. Like you just can't you can't cover a wound with a Band-Aid. Right. It's going to get wet. It's going to be slime. You have to take the. You have to nurture. You have to clean it. You have to do all the things so that your wound can can heal properly. So I like when you said that, Jackie, that when you are writing, you're having that release because you are dealing with some of these things for the very first time. Like you experienced it, but you're dealing with it now. Right. Yes. And I felt you said earlier, too, you were pushing things down to keep it moving. Right. You push it down. You keep it moving. Right. So what what I what I immediately wrote down when you said that when we keep pushing things down, it becomes a weighted anchor. Mm -hmm. And the more we suppress and the more we just ignore the more we're going to carry and the heavier that thing's going to get. And then all the things are going to pile on top and you just have a whole anchor. And you know what an anchor do? If an anchor can keep a ship in place, what do you think? What do you think is going to do for you to you? Mm -hmm. If you don't deal with the weight. So Brittany said it last week, carry the weight well, right? Carry the W-A-I-T, but we have to carry that W-E-I-G-H-T too. That's right. And you know what, Natasha, I think too, as women in particular, we all kind of feel like that we have to always carry that weight mm -hmm. for the home and for our families and, you know, keep the household running and the kids and the, all the things that we have to do. And I think in being bold, you also have to make sure you're setting boundaries girl, and that you are you know, and we've had a lot of conversation about this over the years, um, the people that we have around us and how, <laughs> let me go ahead and guess it real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> little sip. Listen, water you know, and mind my business. Right. Um, 
I'm sorry. I do have a little bit Don't of be fun. sorry. You had to have fun. I had more rhythm than that. I don't know what that was, but I, I felt that in my heart. Just like, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. It, we ain't holding back. It is so important, ladies. It is so important to have the right people around you. Um, I'm going to be completely honest here. I have two brothers. One has never liked me. They're, they're both from, a, they, they have the same dad. We have different dads. They have the same father. One is 17 years older than I am. The other 16 years older than I am. The one that's 17 years older than I am, he um, lives in Oklahoma and never liked me ever, ever jealous because my dad was around. His dad wasn't just mean to me. Um, he has four children. He doesn't participate in their lives, really never has. Um, I had a lot of guilt because my mom um, really took care of him. Like he needed the most um, looking after, even he was so much older than I was. But um, so when she passed away, he really, really felt that. He moved away to Oklahoma. Um, he would call me when my son was like 12 or 13 and say, how's your baby doing? <laughs> Sir, my, my baby. Sir. That's how you mean it, sir. sir. That baby is not wearing diapers anymore. He's outside riding his bike. That baby is not a baby anymore. Um, but I had to kind of, I don't know, detach myself because, you know, you hear all the time. And I believe this to a certain extent. Family is everything. Hmm. Everything but, that can stress your life. But... If that family is sucking you dry or that family is leaving you feeling worse off than when they left or when they found you, you need to, you need to make that break. Because immediately. Immediately. Um, I had a lot of guilt though when my mom died, because like I said, she kind of looked after him. Um, but I had to let that go because that relationship did not serve me well. And it made me feel like, um, I don't even know. Like I was less than he just always put me down. So I had to make a conscious effort to be like, I love you because you're my brother and we mm -hmm. have the same mother, but that's the extent of it because it. my, my mental health, every time I spoke to him, it was taking a hit. Yeah. Um, I have other family members that I adore and I love with all my heart, but when they come around, they suck me dry at times. Girl. So I've had to uh, make sure that I have very clear boundaries, um, how I see the, them, how I um, allow access to me with them. Um, and that was hard because I think we are raised that family is everything and you, you have family first. And, you know, I, my immediate family, my son and my husband, absolutely. Like, yeah, everybody else getting where they fit in. <laughs> if you fit, because listen, <laughs> I am not... health is is more important to me. I don't mm. need to um, have you to my house and then feel like I need to call in sick the next day for mental. Oh, health. girl, no, we ain't got to. <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, we're yeah, not doing that. no, like Jen said, you have to love them from a distance. Sometimes I'm gonna tell you all the time because here's the thing. I don't deal with relatives at all. I don't even call them family. So Jackie doing a lot better than me. I call, <laughs> refer to them all as relatives. What that means is we are blood related. I don't deal with them. I have, when I tell you, I probably, I have not probably, I have ace, I have two sisters, but I talked to one. I haven't talked to the other one over 20 years. And I have a brother and I have one cousin on my paternal side um, that I talk to. That's it out of a whole bunch of people. And I'm good. Um, blood does not make you family, guys. It makes you related. Right. And I have been blessed with some amazing people in my life that have treated me better than the blood relatives. Why? Because I have a similar story like Jackie. I've been hated since conception. I've, And, and this is really sad um, but we can talk about that another day, but I have a similar story to Jackie with relatives just not liking me. And I'm going to put this out there. I had one hate me so bad when I was getting married in 1999, this person called the church, 
and told the pastor to cancel my wedding because I died of a heart attack. Who need people like that in your space? I'm telling you, this is so, when I tell you I don't care about people coming or go, you can go <laughs> quickly. Um, but I don't have time for a whole lot of, but those boundaries really are important. And I've always had boundaries since I was younger. So I've always lived my life with boundaries. Um, I thought that I was really being... Um, really like super duper like wild crazy about it but I what I really realized the older I get now those were my boundaries and I don't let people do me I don't allow people to get close to me so if I let people get close to me you have a space here but it, it don't have to last long because listen <laughs> I keep the scissors on ready I will let you go in a heartbeat because that's a boundary and you have to even be bold with yourself bold we're talking about leaping and doing all the things right but you have to make a bold stand for your life and mm -hmm. where your life is going and the people that are in it absolutely um the ladies are talking to us jackie in the comments veronica says amen oh my omg yeah they they crazy they they were wild <laughs> but you know what it's crazy. you can't what you can't do what you can't do is God's girl. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can't do God's girl. Mm -mm. So like the Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. And I wasn't even living for God then. I know. God, is, God is in, God is in the, 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 you know, the, the, um, what do you say? My vengeance, the vengeance is his. He's an, I, I didn't have to do nothing. I just don't deal with people and people don't like me because I don't deal with them. And Absolutely. That too, and you have to get to that place where you just don't care. Brittany said, yeah, whole dang fool. Yep. But you know what? Let a fool be a fool, but you guys just maintain your peace. That's, That's why right. peace is important because when you have peace in your life and someone come out in, in, in something else, you already going to be like, eh, eh, this ain't what I'm accustomed to. You got to go on over there, back over there with that mm -hmm. because the, we ain't about that over here. We don't do that over here. No, we do <laughs> not. Person, what in the whole world is wrong with that person? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you guys the truth. Uh -huh. People are wild out here. Yeah. Um, yes, right, Nikita, look. And, and still lurking. <laughs> they they right. watching, but yeah. they can't even access me on social media, even on my platforms that are open to the public. I have them all blocked because I you don't you don't deserve, you know, I don't feel like you access. deserve you don't access. deserve the access. I don't even want you looking at me. I don't want you looking at my kids, my husband, nothing attached to me. So that's my boundary. That's my right. boundary also includes my husband and my children and my granddaughter too. Yeah. So don't touch, don't yeah. touch. <laughs> no, too. And I think too, like I had to, I had to make the bold decision because my brother um, recently got on Facebook. Oh and no! And he sent me a friend request, and I, as soon as I saw that name pop up, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not going to be able to do that one. <laughs> I, I I I understand. So Jackie, with you making the good for you for standing your ground though and, and maintaining your, your boundaries though, because listen, we ain't got time for this. We we are and just know guys when you really are doing the God thing and when you are in the will of God, just know that these things are gonna come and try to trip you up. They're stumbling blocks, they're distractions. Excuse me, I got the burps today. I stayed with the burps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just know that it comes, it's coming because it wants you to stop. It wants you to quit. It wants you to second guess. It wants you to question God. It wants you to question if you really feel that, if you really know that you're supposed to do it. But you know what? Even if you're not a thousand percent sure that God wants you to do it, I believe this is just me. You don't have to believe it. I believe that God still honors the faithfulness of the, of the push and of the step. And then as you go, he'll let you know this, not this way, this way, but at least you're walking. You can't go nowhere if you don't get up. That's right. And you know what, too, Natasha, when you're walking, you will have a sense of peace. There will not be confusion. You, you will feel it from the inside out when mm -hmm. you're walking in that purpose. There will be no doubt that you're, mm -hmm that you're not in it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and again, being bold is just taking that opportunity when God leaves it on your heart. This is my pet peeve. And I used to, I used to be guilty of it years and years ago, mm -hmm. always saying God willing. Well, if God's willing, I'll be, I'll do that. <laughs> if God's will, ma'am and sir, God is normally willing. 
Okay. God is normally willing. You're the one that's like, oh, right. That's, I'm going to pump the brain. I don't know if God's willing on that one. Um, mm -hmm. God's usually willing. He really mm -hmm. is. You it's willing is his God's will on delay. On yeah. your delay, not his. Because God is like, I done told <laughs> you to do girl, this 15, 15 years ago. And we still you, stop. But you told me, you told me, and it cracked me up. When I told you I was finally doing it, you said something like, well, I think your grace period is <laughs> I did. Your grace period has expired or something. That thing is 30 years old, girl. I think that grace... That warranty, that grace, whatever you want to call it. Girl, you done ran out of grace. We, we, that grace, uh, you're living on film. Can you please pick up a pen or a keyboard and just do something, please? Please. I did tell you, Miss Evelyn says sometimes if we don't take control, it won't happen. You are absolutely right. Because, like, your car won't even move if you're going somewhere. If you put the GPS on, your GPS won't even start giving directions until you start moving. Mm -hmm. Then you'll start, and you got to get a little ways down and start to get the instructions. But if you're type personality like me, you want all your eyes dotted, T's crossed, you want all the information right now. God ain't like that. He just give a little instruction, a little, a little something in your heart. Go and do that first. And then he says, I will direct your paths, right? Lean not to our own understanding. That's right. And you know what? I got I got to tell you. So when I started this blog on January 7th and, you know, I'm writing some really deep personal stuff in this blog, like I'm I'm putting it out there and which is kind of hard for me because I'm a lot like you in the sense where in the past it, it was hard for me to share a lot. Like I just it was just hard. But I think as you and I keep growing we are to be out here connecting and sharing. And mm -hmm. even though we resisted for so long because we didn't want to be in the light and we didn't want to be in, in everybody's face, that's what we're called to do. So um, I forgot what I was go where I was going with it. It's okay. Bring it back, uh, Jesus. <laughs> where, where is the thought? Where is it at? Now I lost my train of thought. I don't know what it's going to say. Um Dang it, I don't it's know. It's all right. It'll come back. All but right. Brittany, if it come back, just go ahead and jump right on in. Brittany said, boundaries save my life. Yes, that's that's a good, that's not like a good old blog here. Um, God is already, already willing. Yes. Okay, yes. it's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. <laughs> so here we go. Back on track. So I, I was putting all this personal stuff in this blog, and a lot of my coworkers who I currently work with now are part of it and are reading it. <laughs> And I'm forgetting that I'm putting like, you know, alcoholic father and just all the stuff yeah. I've been through. Now, mind you, I and I have my ugly cry. So I put the ugly cry in there. But I've I've I'm healing and moving on. So they're reading the stuff and I'm in a different mental space. Like they're reading it and I'm watching my husband eat dinner like we're having a con <laughs> like I'm, I'm past it. And I go to work and people are like like looking at me with like puppy dog eyes and rubbing my shoulder. And I'm like, like that ain't your story. <laughs> you what's, ain't happening? Saying, what's happening no. folks? Like what, what's going on? And they're like, we're so sorry. So it's kind of, it, it's kind of weird in a way that, you know, I've been through all this stuff and I'm, I'm putting it out there for people and they're really feeling it. One of my friends called me and said they cry, were crying and you know, I, I, it, it's a lot. It really is a lot. But I, every time I sit down at my computer to write something, I thank God for just giving me the, the mindset and the spirit to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, God is willing. God wants you to move. He doesn't want you to sit stagnant. He doesn't want you to miss out on the things that he has for you. Um, I keep thinking, you know, what if I never, ever did this? Like, I can't imagine dragging that around the next 40 years or however many years he has left for me on this earth. Or watching someone else live and do it because, you know, one thing about God, his word will not return to him void. We can absolutely guarantee that. <laughs> and okay, Jackie, grace period up. I'm on, I'm on, let somebody else go on and do what you were supposed to do. And now you accountable. And this is what I always say. That blood is on your hands because mm -hmm. we were supposed to do that thing because there were lives that were only meant to be touched by us. Yep. Right. And because we are selfish, we don't want to do what God requires, but here's the kicker guys. 
any of you that are parents on here, here's, here's the, I want you to remember this. The next time you go tell your kid to do something and they don't do it, don't get mad at your kid because you're a hypocrite. Yep. Because the same way that God tells, give us the commands and, and asks us to do things, tell us to do things, and we sit on it like we're like we're hatch, waiting for eggs to hatch. We have no right to talk to our children and, and get upset with them or punish them because they didn't move quick enough. We don't move quick enough either. And so I want you to remember that in your parenting next time, because God deals with me a lot with parenting. And there have been a lot of times where I did not do. And then I went to go and try to check my kids. And he'd be like this. <laughs> you ain't. <laughs> yeah. You know, God talked to me like how like just like this, because I'm a message tra message translation, like because he got to hit me upside my head. Right. Because I'm hard headed. Yes. And I was like, oh, so now I'm very cognizant of, oh. Let me make sure I'm I'm doing what God wants me to do before I tell these kids. And I'm not saying that your kids are not supposed to obey you, but if you want them to, to move when you on command and on cue, you might want to be taking heed because just because you're an adult, you're still a child in God's eye. Yeah. You're still his child, just like your children are your children. So just take that, take that for what it's worth, yeah, and do better with it. Yeah. The ladies are talking to us. Um, Brittany said it's so difficult to be vulnerable, but God sends the right people to make it easy and feel supported and a part of a community. Absolutely. But how can you, how, how would, how would any of us feel that support if the ones that are supposed to show up to give that and, you know, create that environment don't show up if they're not on their square, if they're not on their post, ain't nobody getting helped. No one's getting supported and there ain't no community. If, if you, let's say, I'm the one that's supposed to start this group, and I did, and I was, I am, and I did. What if I didn't show up? You guys wouldn't be here tonight. What if it's 7 o'clock came, and it was just a blank screen? It was like nothing. It's like she don't keep her word. When? We we pray. We we ask God for things, and we, God, you get me out of this. I remember being back, back in my BC days, drunk as a skunk, kissing that porcelain bowl, Oh God, I knew how to pray then. If you get me through this, I'll never do this again. Girl, a couple of days later, I'm drunk again. Uh -huh. Hugging that same bowl. You know, it's just like we pray in a moment when we want things, and then as soon as the, it, the we feel like we got a little clearance, we, we back cutting up again. Uh -huh. We are back cutting up again. But these are all great comments, and thank you guys for just sharing your hearts on here. And Jennifer said. I love that you said blood doesn't make you family. It just makes you related. And that right there is good for my soul. Uh -huh. Near and dear because just because they are blood don't make them family. And just because you forgive people does not. That's another part of being bold. Um, forgiveness is for you. And just because you forgive a person does not mean that they have to have access Never. back to your life. You know, um, <laughs> No in no re-entry. You need to put that sign up. No re-entry. We one and done over here for real. Yeah. One and done yeah. over here. And if you know me, <laughs> you know I'm dead serious. I give you one shot and then that's it. You ruin that shot with me. I'm done because now I'm just I'm done. I, I won't be able to trust you again. Mm -hmm. Um and you know what though? I want to speak to the women out there because you and I you know, we we have been through a lot and we're pretty we're bold. If I do say so myself, we are bold. We don't put up with a lot of foolishness, shenanigans. We've lived. We've learned. We still have a lot more living and learning to do. But if you are just coming into yourself as a woman and, you know, Natasha's like one and done. But that takes a little practice. <laughs> so. And all the, all the stuff that we're saying, because I, mean, I lived we, it, we come hard. Like she's like unapologetic. I'm like, be bold, take the leap, do it, do it, do it. But sometimes you need to, you need to take that into uh, like little baby steps. If you're not living that bold life or you're, you haven't hit that unapologetic life yet. Right. You, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if that means, you know, saying I'd prefer not to have that family dinner at, my mom's house because everybody acts a fool um use your words start putting mm -hmm. those boundaries in place and mm -hmm. it, you're gonna see as you practice those boundaries and as you move through those boundaries in your life it's gonna become easier and i even found that a lot of times i wouldn't even have to 
do it myself, God would come in and remove some people or some situations and some things for me. Like I would pray and next thing I knew, somebody would have moved or went away or something happened and I didn't even have to do it. they unfriend you? (laughs) (laughs) I have a few. We weren't friends friends anyway. You just cleared up some space. (laughs) That's right. So I just noticed on my friends, I had what, 594, now I'm down to 591 and I'm like, Mm. okay, bye-bye. Um, but that, but, but like I said, you got to start somewhere with this boldness and this unapologetic life, because once you get there, ladies, you are free. You are free. free. You don't care what people think about you. You don't care that you have five less friends on the Facebook. You don't care that somebody didn't come to your house, that you invited 20 people and only 10 came and you're not worried about the people who didn't show up. You're just happy for the ones that are there. Mm -hmm. That's when you get to that level of freedom. That's a dangerous level of free. (laughs) It's amazing because you don't, you don't have that heaviness. Mm -hmm. You're, you're good with the people who show up in your life. Mm -hmm. You're good with the people who love you unconditionally. Um, I have, and I think she's Shakira. I'm going to talk about her for a quick second. Um, She and I have been friends for about five years. Um, She really knows my family situation. Um, And that's her and her family, her parents. Um, Me and my husband and my son, we spend holidays with them. Like they're our family. Not to say we don't love our, you know, family, but we're at peace when we're with them. We don't yes. feel like when we leave their house, like it's been chaos heavy. and heavy and like, it's peaceful when you, you when know, you're anybody got time for that. Like, no. And, and all the drama and who's coming angry and who didn't bring the, whatever they were supposed to bring and they're angry and the thing. And I don't have, I can't, I, I I'm done. I, I can't. And I won't. Mm-mm, no more. Um, someone said, Facebook user said, and you know what? And I'm glad that you have someone like that in your space because I remember there was a time where you had someone, but then that person had left. But so God always upgrade you. God will always send you an upgrade. Just know that sometimes people go and we hold on to people, places and things too long. And um, when we, 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 we let things and people go past their expiration date in our lives. Um, Amen. And And, you know what? And, And saying that Natasha, my situation that you're talking about I, you have friends in your life and, and I've learned this over the years, but there were people in my life that I would think, how on earth can I live without these people? Like how on earth they have, this person has been my friend since I was born, like in my life, constant, you're going along, you're living life and things happen and all of a sudden they're not there and you have to be okay with that. And that sometimes that's hard because you envision this life of they're almost like a sister to you and it's hard to let that go. But when it happens, when that situation happened, that was a God situation because I don't know if I would have put that person out of my life um, on my own, but I wish them well. Um, I know that they've struggled a lot with where they are in their life right now. Um, I still pray for them. Um, But the drama and the stress that was brought into my home that I allowed come into my home because I thought I was being a good friend. I will yeah. never do that again, ever. Yeah. I was bringing that toxicity into my home. I was bringing that negative energy into my home. Um, my son was part of it and hearing it and would be like, what's wrong with so-and-so. And it, mm-hmm. so that was a huge learning experience for me because right. I thought I was being a good friend, but I was just, you know, I, I, Jackie, not. I'm all for being a good friend, but I'm 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 even I'm, I'm, my jam right now is being a better me to me. Absolutely. And so people really in my life, even if you're in my life now, it's me first. Like I, and I mean that. Yes. <laughs> I but look, mean but look, it. But look how long that took you to get to that it point. It took me a long time. And we were going through that. A, a, I was going through a situation the same time you were going through a situation. We went through a breakup. We went through a friendship breakup. We did. At the same time, we were snotting, crying and praying each other through at work. <laughs> we know like it's wild. But you know what? 
God removing certain people from my life was the biggest blessing I didn't know I needed. The biggest, the biggest look blessing I didn't know I needed because had I stayed connected, I would have been in business deals with people. Just my life would have been in the shambles, guys. Absolutely. So I thank God for everybody that he removes. Um, everybody can stay. Um, and some people are seasonal. And some people are just an uh, assignment. So I also, when you're being bold, like Jackie was saying, you have to have a bold no. You have to have bold boundaries. You have to have a bold, unapologetic, um, you know, vibe, <laughs> mood, right? Yeah. Because it really is bold. Because like I said earlier, bold people aren't afraid to do risky things. They are confident, confident. They're fearless. And they are ready to take risks. Even if that means leaving folk alone, That's even if right. that means leaving the job, you got to purge all the things that aren't serving you well. Every now person, place, thing, people, place, thing, yes. purge them all so that you can walk in your God given freedom. So someone, excuse me, burps. <laughs> Thanks for your obedience, lady. This is bless me. Sis. Y'all already know I'm not all the way. <laughs> You're going to get me all, all every single time. Um, Jen said, "I Jennifer said, I feel seen. Oh, man. I don't know what part oh, that was. But. I don't know either. And Jen is my my love as well. Um, You know, Jen and I met in a situation where, and I'm going to keep this brief, but so that same employer that Natasha and I work for, I had a situation. Um, I was in a position for what, maybe 11 years. New supervisor came, did not like the way things were being handled. Um situation. I was being bold. I reached out for help. Things got twisted a little bit. I ended up going to work in a different department. Um, I was very upset about it, broke my spirit. Um, things happened that, that just weren't true. Um, I had a lot, I was very upset. Um, so I went to a different department because I knew that at that point, at that point, I could not work with this person. I had a different mm -hmm. work ethic. My morals were different. Could, I yeah. just couldn't do it. So I went to work in this other department and that's where I met Jen and Jen's watching right now. Um, and I stayed there for a few years. Um, and then I moved on to the job that I love now. Um, but I always say through the hell that I went through with that work situation, mm -hmm. the best thing that came out of it was my friendship with Jen and meeting her. Love it. So for not, that situation, I wouldn't have met Jen mm -hmm. and I wouldn't, she is like a sister to me. Like mm -hmm. she, Natasha, Shakira and Jen are my three. And I don't know what I would do without them. Like they are no judgment. They are authentic. They are true. They love me regardless of my craziness. Um, and if I had to leave and lose to gain those three, I, it's all worth it. Ladies. Amen. It's Amen. Amen. I um I feel the same way. You know I love you, girl. But again, like Jackie said, we have to lose to gain. Mm -hmm. We really do have to lose to gain. And what are you willing to give up so that you can really gain what you're supposed to have? Um, Miss Evelyn said, "I'm glad I didn't know you drunk." <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was. Oh, listen, when I was a party girl, listen, oh, that was many, 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 many years ago. I don't even like <laughs> anymore. That was so many, so many years ago. I was like in my twenties, right? Um, but no, I wasn't the crazy. <laughs> I just, you know, I like to. I, I was home minding my business, and, and if you bother me now, you have a problem. But I was, I was a uh, party. Like I like to party and have fun, and it, well, I was a happy social drinker. <laughs> That is so funny. Uh, Brittany said, freedom is sweet serenity. Oh, my gosh. I love that so much. Sweet mm -hmm. serenity. Mm -hmm. Sweet serenity. Um, mm -hmm. Shakira's throwing you up some hearts, Jack. Woo She's throwing up hearts. Love you back, Shakira. Um, Brittany says, some people have an expiration date in our lives. Seasonal people. Yep. Yep. Just like milk. Just like food. People go bad, too. <laughs> your time is up. Your time. Who was that? Batista, your time is up. Your time is now. <laughs> Who's that wrestler? Who's that wrestler? I don't know. I don't know. If y'all know that, y'all let me know. <laughs> so we got one here. Oh, I feel like you about, you about losing longtime friends. 
Brittany says, I only have one OG from when she was a kid. The other two she'd known for 30 years were drifted apart and have different values now. It hurt at first, but God has replaced those people with amazing sisters to me. And again, we're gain we're losing to gain. And I'll tell you what, I don't even look at them as law, like as losing. I look at it as lessons. People will teach you exactly what you're supposed to be and who, who you are <laughs> supposed to be. Like exactly. you pay attention and really tap in you will, people will show you everything you need to do and, and who they are in the very beginning. And it is up to you to decide if you want to pursue that relationship. But sometimes we go in with blinders on and all we can see is, oh, I, I like I like your shoes. I like your purse and you're fun. You turn up, you want to have fun. You want to go to the winery. And this person is, well, was me all the time. Every time you talk to them, they drain you. And it's like, oh, I missed that part. Nope. I don't do that. Well, with me. I don't let people suck my energy like that. If you are constantly complaining, I will not be calling you. I will not be communicating mm -hmm. with you because that is draining to me yes. and it brings me down. Yes. Um, Jen Jennifer said that is one thing about the kids. It was supposed to, it was supposed to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Tell, next time you tell your kids something, make sure you're doing what God told you to do. That's so you don't you know why you say check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, Nikita said, I think sometimes people keep longtime friends a part of their lives because of time. What does the friendship mean now as adults? To me, it means nothing because I don't, I, <laughs> I have like, I, I don't know, but you guys, as you grow, as you heal, um, you, you know, you have to, you have to be okay. Growth requires a lot of goodbyes. Mm uh hmm. -huh. Change requires goodbye. It requires you to say goodbye. Some people have only gone as far with you as they could go. Everyone is not meant to go with you the distance. So everyone's not meant to finish the marathon with you. Some people can only sprint with you. Some people are going to run that marathon with you. Some people are going to just walk, right? So you have your walkers, your runners, your sprinters, you know, your marathoners, but you just have to place people where they are. And sometimes when people come in, and this is that bold thinking and your bold discernment, right? You have to know if this person is an assignment or if they are a friend. Because sometimes we get caught up treating the assignment like it's a friend and they get attached. And then when you go, you've hurt them. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, you crush them because they were never meant to be that attached to you. So you guys have to be mindful of your assignment mm -hmm. and know if it's a friendship. Yeah. Um, so you have to really go to God and like, show me who does, where this person fit in. Mm -hmm. um, you can mess yourself up and you can really damage somebody in the process. Um, Jen said, oh, I love you, Jack Queen. And we oh, definitely love Jack Queen. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the three no, the three no. no. <laughs> Miss Evelyn said you guys are dishing out some good stuff. Thank you, Miss Evelyn. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. Um, mm -hmm. Veronica said, yes, that happened to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what? This gnat here is getting on my nerve, y'all. So I, I think that I think that gnat was with you last week when you were talking to sweet Yvette. I think that thing's paying rent right now. I, I, I gotta do something with this plant right here because this thing is about to get stuck on something sticky. It's about on my nerves. So if I slap myself, I'm not losing it. It's just gnat. That's gnat. You got get some rent money. Beating myself up. Veronica <laughs> said, I thought a person was a new friend, but they really were. And it's not. <laughs> know your assignment. Know where people are supposed to be. Yes. Um, and you know what, Veronica? And she got hurt. And that's. And that, yes. See? And you will learn as you get older, and I don't know, Veronica, how old you are, not that I need to know, but when you get the years on you and you have these friendships, you are going to know pretty quickly right on when you meet someone mm -hmm. where they are, how are they going to move through your world and your life. And, um, you know, that took me some time because... You know, I, I'm the one that always kind of felt the guilt because I felt like I had to help everybody and I had to have a word for everybody. And I had to be the person that needed to listen to everybody. And I was drained and I have always been the person that, oh, she's, she's strong. Oh, she's the one. And there were times in my twenties and thirties, I was given advice. People should not have been coming to me for advice because <laughs> I was still young in my walk with God and you you really, and that's another thing about being bold is know who you're communicating with. Because if you have somebody that's been in three divorces, you don't want to go to, not that I have, but I'm just saying, um, you know, you don't want to go to them for marriage to, 
advice or if you oh. have someone that's been bankrupt three times, you don't want to get financial advice from them. Um, so be very mindful of who you're trusting yourself and your heart and your life with. Because like Natasha said, not everybody is going to be your friend. Not everybody, and I've always said this, not everybody deserves a seat at your table. Not everybody deserves to hear your story, um, except for mine, because I have this blog now. So I'm telling everybody. And, and, and here, share your story now. <laughs> so just know who you can be vulnerable with. But I'm going to keep right. sharing my story because I'm telling you what, it's free of me. I remember so many years ago, I was so ashamed and I was so embarrassed mm -hmm. by the things that I had went through. Um, and that, that part really held me back too. And I really had a, an, an awakening. It was like, I like someone need to hear this. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. someone need to hear this because it's almost like holding the mirror up. And people, you, you guys don't discount yourself. Don't count yourself out. You may not think you have what they need, but you really have what they need. Um, don't discount yourself. You just give what you have and let them go. And I do it a lot. And I'll be like, you little old me, I, I did that for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I go about my business, but I'm like, nothing spectacular to me, yep. but it was everything to them. Everything. And you know what, Natasha, why not you? Why not? Me? Why not? Me? Why not? Why and that's, that's the mindset that I think we all need to have. Like, be bold. Go after yours. Why not you? Yep. Why not you? Well, um, because nothing grows in our comfort zone. So, Jackie, mm -mm. how can how can we help? What, what, what advice would you give the ladies to leap with boldness? What is, if you have to give them the top three things, or top two, or top one, what mm -hmm. would they be to leap with boldness? Because hearing your story... And knowing how you sat on, you know, on it for so long and mm -hmm. now you're doing it. And now it's like, cause I remember those conversations. You was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing it now. I'm, I'm not doing that. And it was, you should, you know, but what would you tell them how, you know, advice to leap with boldness? Well, I think, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier is you have to get out of your comfort zone. Number one. You're never going to you're never going to fulfill your purpose if you're stuck in that box. That's the first thing I think for me, peace. I had to have peace inside of myself to even want to make that leap, because once you've made the leap, there's no going back. You are committed. You it is done. So you have to be ready for what comes with making that leap. But I tell you, it's a beautiful thing. Stepping outside of your comfort zone, being confident in who you are as a woman, being confident, knowing that whatever it is inside of you, what that purpose is, what you're leaping for, you're going to make a difference because you were called to do it. You're going to make a difference no matter what it is. No matter, and like Natasha, if it's tie dyeing a shirt, somebody's going to want that shirt. It would, no matter what it is. We have to stop making excuses. We have to quit saying, well, if God's willing and all the excuses in the world are holding you back from whatever it is, whether it's taking control of your health, taking control of your finances, leaping into a new position, um, whatever it, the case may be, we have to stop making those, those excuses. And you know what? If we fall on our face and we fail, we get back up, we dust ourselves off and we, we go after it. Because why not us? Why not you? Get after it. Let's do it. Get after it. Let's do it. You know, you said um, if you fall and fail, but even falling is not failure. You oh. know, it's only a failure if you quit. That's right. Um, you get up if, and, you know, I, I watch my children and I watch my granddaughter. You know, they went from crawling you know, they did that little army crawl thing first and then they scooted up on their knees and they start, you know, moving, you know, and they got through motion. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, my granddaughter got up and she had like this little side thing, like she was crawling like on the side and her leg, like a little crab, right? Just with one leg though. And then the next thing you know, she was pulling herself up and now, mm -hmm. you know, then she's walking and holding the long things. And then the next thing you know, she's, you know, she's, she's doing like a little, it looked like a little mummy, like little babies and they trying to get their bearings. She's trying to get her bearings. But that is just like us. When we start, we literally have to crawl. Mm -hmm. we 
Absolutely. have to walk before we <laughs> run. And we can, and so it is a process, but you will never run. You will never walk if you don't crawl. You will never, you, so you can't get to the next step if you don't do the step before. Mm -hmm. And you really just have to, it really is the excuses. Excuses are, they're so played out. And I know just like, just in conversations I have with people or whatever, just people in passing or whatever. And as soon as they start that, 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 that excuses and complaining, I'm like, all right, later, I dismiss it immediately because when I'm not going to fuel that and you're not going to bring that over here because moods and stuff are contagious, guys. Uh -huh. And that's what we're going to jump on you and you question everything that you are working on. And so protect your ear gate too. But yeah, I have zero tolerance for excuses and people who are always whining. Uh -huh. Like it annoys, it annoys me. Like it's so annoying. I have stopped talking to people because they just started annoying me. Like, I don't care how nice you are. If you're like, just stop the complaints, stop the excuses. <laughs> like, I, even like with my kids. And, and that's because I made excuses for so long. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on the other side of it. And I know we all have to heal through, our, you know, in our journey. Right. But now that I'm out of it, I'm like, yo, that's corny. Like, mm -hmm. why, why you, you, 50. You still making excuses like about something like, come on. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like you just have to, there has to come a time and a place where you say, you know what, I'm going all in. That's right. I don't know God. And this is what I literally had to do. I don't know God. I don't know how. I don't know why, but I trust you. And that is, that is the part in the place in your walk and in your life that you just have to get to. And if you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you get to have an encounter with him and he's change and shift your entire world. But if you have a relationship with God, you already know. You already know. Because Jackie, like Jackie said earlier, why not you? Bible clearly says we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. That's so right. we are meant to be. We are meant to be great. Yeah. And listen, meant. and and you cannot get caught up in what anyone, family, friends, whoever thinks about your walk, your purpose. My long story short, my other brother, not the one that still asked how the baby's doing, that's 20, but now um, the other one, when I told him that I was going to do this blog, he, he was very upset and he tried to discourage me and he was like, I don't want you to write anything bad about your dad, um, just all kinds of stuff. And I, I was like, hold on a minute. It's not about you and how you feel. Right. It's about what I need to do for myself. And what I'm putting in this blog are facts and truths. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to read the blog. You don't have to support me in doing it. It's still going to happen. Yeah. And <laughs> I was just giving you the courtesy to let you know, hey, this is what I was going to do. And maybe thinking that you would support your sister. Um, but I, I didn't need it. But you yeah. have to remember when you are stepping out and you are being bold, it's going to tick off some folks mm -hmm. and they are going to question and downplay it. And you have to be OK with that. And I think, too, with me, you know, turning 50 um, <laughs> and being honest, I really and even when I was not 50 and I met Natasha, what, 2009? I really have always been of that mindset. Like I really have. don't care what people think about me. Yeah. Um, I really don't. And I don't know if that's because of the way I was raised and the whole alcoholism and all the things I saw and went through and I just had to push on and carry on. And I don't know if that's a curse or a blessing, but my whole life, I, I really don't care. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that my friends really do love about me because I think I'm pretty authentic and I love the yeah. <laughs> love. I, I am. And I love the things that I love. And whether you think I should or I shouldn't or what, I just don't, I just don't care. So I think that is part of my freedom in going and walking in this journey. No, not everybody has that. I know people and I have friends that are so caught up in what other people think, and that will hold you back. You mm -hmm. have to drop that. You have to let that go and be released from that. Um, because once you take the leap, no matter what it is, it's all yours. So 
I would love the people in my life to support that, but it's not going to sway me either way because I'm going to keep going after it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep pushing forward. Um, I'm going to keep doing what God told me I needed to do. Um, you know, God used to tell me some things. Um, and I used to say, really, really, Lord. <laughs> we all have those moments <laughs> like, you talking to the know. right one. Right. <laughs> Lord, I don't know this person. You want me to say what? Mm -hmm. Well, come on now. I don't want to do that. And here I am messaging some woman that I only knew in passing, talking about how her smile is dim and I she like a beautiful light and all this stuff. And I'm giving her scripture and I'm thinking she does not. <laughs> Lord, stop. But again, you have what she needs. No matter how how small we think it may be. It is what they need in that moment to get through that particular moment. We don't know, like we don't fill our car up. We, some of our cars will, you know, fill on a, go on a tank for like four days. I'm going a week, but yeah. you have, you, we are literally going through life, filling up people's tanks. That's right. That's we, right. People are around here dying. They are killing themselves. They are depressed. They have no one to talk to. They can't trust people. People are going through real life issues. And some people would rather handle people, you know, uh, mishandle people than love people. I choose to love people. And my part of my loving people now is getting out of my way. And just, just giving them that word, like Jackie said, or that hug or word of encouragement or whatever is going to put that smile on their face to keep them from maybe hurting themselves or, you know, to get them closer to God. Or maybe they've been doubting and they needed that. Or, you know, we, sh we have to show up like the blessing. We are a blessing and we are the answer to someone's prayer. So when you don't show up, their prayer don't show up. When you show up, their prayer, their answer to their prayer shows up. Yeah. And so you guys have to look at it like that. You are the answer to someone's prayer. You are the answer to someone's problem. You are the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, 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 all of you watching are the answer. Jennifer said, this is for you, Jackie. Absolutely. You taught me to take steps to protect my peace and care less about what people think. Long way to go, but still working toward, towards mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jen. And Jen has one of the biggest hearts and she will do anything for anyone. And I think too, that, you know, she and I have talked a lot about that, about her boundaries, because it's hard for her to say no. Mm -hmm. So um, she's getting a lot better at it. Uh, I think she really sees that her peace, she needs to protect her peace first. Um, because, you know, like everybody, you can't pour from an empty cup. Girl. So, People are getting from the overflow anymore. I said this time, I said this last time, and I said, I'll say it time and time again. I no longer get from my cup. It's the overflow. My cup, it's the overflow. Yeah. And if I don't have it to give, I'm not giving it because I have totally, I there were times where I depleted myself and I didn't even have it to give. I was on vapors myself. And there were times where I needed the answer to my prayer to show up. That's right. And they did not. But then God will send me as the answer to someone's prayer to help them. And I'm like, well, this is not going to work. I need, and right. as I'm pouring, God fills me up. That's right. As we pour, God fills. As we pour, God fills. And it just goes like this. And I tell you, and I would leave just feeling full. So we just have to just, you know, just keep doing the thing. That's right. And you know what, Lynn, and let me just say, when you are taking that leap and you are being bold, there is not a better feeling in the world because you are confident. You, you, you almost feel like you're untouchable because you finally feel like you're doing the things that you should have been doing. So like I said, not all of us are taking these big monster moves right now, but the baby steps, because you're creating the person that you're meant to be when you're doing these things. Mm -hmm. And when you're creating this environment where you've kind of pushed down that, that comfort zone and you're stepping out. And I, I felt proud of myself when I wrote that first blog post. I, it was like, I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's undescribable because you're doing what you're meant to do. And there, I'm, I move in this world differently now. Since January 7th, 
I move differently because now I feel like I finally am doing something that was on my heart and spirit for 30 years, 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. I remember when you launched it and I had to call you. So I was like, girl, <laughs> how did, what did I, I said, how do you feel? I said, I know you feel like a weight has been lifted. And you were like, oh my gosh. It was like get, getting a, a, a breath of fresh air. Cause I know that's what it felt like for me. And it may feel different, may have felt different from, for, you know, mm -hmm. for different for all of us. But when you really just say, screw it. I'm going to do what it. it's like skydiving. You're going to get up in this plane. You're going to be, you know, <laughs> tethered to somebody else and you're going to go. You There's only one way to get down. The plane ain't taking you, right? Because you signed up for this. Yeah. You signed up for this. I did. When you, no, we, we signed up for this when we, when we received salvation. We signed up for the work. That's right. We signed up to work like mm -hmm. forever until yeah. he takes us home. So, yeah. You just have to go on, go on, go, go, mm -hmm. go. Like, you know what? You and, then, and this might be a little morbid, but sometimes I think about, because I've had so much death around me and, and people that I love pass and just different situations. But I think, you know what? Okay. Say I'm, I've passed and my son's going through my stuff and he sees draft one, <laughs> draft two, draft three, draft four. Mom, like, what were you doing? Why isn't this finished? What happened? What, what were you, what were you thinking? And now I'm like, you know, I'm leaving behind this legacy, this legacy, this blog, this, mm -hmm. these words that I've had inside of me for so long, like I'm leaving this for him. Mm -hmm. And that sense of accomplishment that I don't have these drafts that are just sitting there. I, I'm going for it. I'm doing it. I'm going to finish it. Yep. Um, and I've told Natasha, you know, I, when I sat down on January 7th, my goal was I'm going to give this blog one year and then I want to switch over to podcast. Um, and, you know, and, and even some people that are close to me were like, well, how are you going to do this for a year? This blog, how, where are you going to run out of content? I'm like, sir, do you know who I am? <laughs> Let me introduce myself. Okay. Yeah, are you, you, you don't know. Where okay. the content's going to come from? Because I can talk about anything. We, I, I, I no doubt. So, no doubt. I, I have content. I see this going bigger than just this blog. It um, is. It's just the start. I think Natasha and I are going to have a lot more cl collaborations that are, have Me yet too. to come. Um, I'm just going to speak it out right now because yeah, I think you know. it's important. And I think that. You know, we want to talk to women. We want to inspire them. We want to talk about living unapologetically and taking leaps and what that mm -hmm. looks like. And, you know, not everybody can do it all at once, but we're going to baby step it together or we're going to take that big leap together, whatever it looks right. like for you. But right. like we've said from the beginning of this, this uh, chat is you have to start. You have to take that leap, no matter what it looks like, no matter who supports you, no matter how afraid you are. Do it afraid. You have to do it afraid. You have to move because yeah. like we said, why not you? Why not you get the success? Why not you get the happiness? Why not you get the joy? Why not you walk around fulfilled in this life? Mm -hmm. Why not you? Why not? Uh, Jackie, you said um, when you said like Jake, your son finding your information, like your, your one part one part two draft one you know there's a saying that the richest place is the cemetery that's where and, and they say that because a lot of people leave full mm -hmm. and i really want to leave here empty i want to pour it all out and i think when you um when you get to that level um, and you just don't care anymore. It's like, God, wherever you send me, I'm going to go. However it look like, I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. Sunday night, Sundays are my rest day. Mm -hmm. No one gets my Sundays. Yep. It's been my rest days for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so for me to come on here and do these chats on Sunday, because I was sitting in my office working one day and it's like, he gave it to me. And I, I'm at this point now where God, where he drops it in, I act on it immediately. I don't sit and I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to click my heels and spin around and go fast about it. I heard him. I'm acting on what he did because it's instantaneous. Like I need, because what he need me to do, um, it's what I need 
Mm -hmm. it, 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 it has to do with what I do with my obedience. Mm -hmm. And so I'm leaping everywhere, Jackie. I'm leaping here, there, and everywhere. So I don't know where I'm going to be next week. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, keep this chat going. I don't want to be on doing this on Sunday night. That's my rest night. Like, this is my rest day. <laughs> I hear you. Um, guys, I've been working on income tax stuff. Like, those numbers have gotten my head. But you know what? I still can come on and pour because this is what I enjoy. And I have poured into people broken. I yes. poured into people. I, I broke bread when I had crumbs, guys. But right. now I get to do it on a heel level. I get to do it on a free level. And people get to experience me on a whole nother level. So you thought I was dope when I was broken and when I was unhealed and when I had crumbs. Come on and bake some bread with me now. That's you right. get a whole next level. And sometimes you have to re really reintroduce yourself to some people because this heel version of me. People don't know this. They don't know. They don't know me, and they don't know how to take. They won't know how to take you. Mm -mm. Not and at when all. You start going and doing. I can, like Jackie said, she said something about her book. She she let her brother here, and he said, "Don't don't write about this, that, whatever." That's because people don't want to face their own pain. They have not talked. They haven't tapped them. So what they're going to try to get you to do is not do it because now they're going to be nosy. That's right. They're going to be real nosy and they're going to tap in. They're going to go and read what she said. Now they got to deal with it. They got to face it, right? Because now the truth is before you, right? So Jackie, go on and get free and go help free the people. Whoever read it, I pray they all get free too. But mm -hmm. don't let the opinions of others stop what God has told you to do. Mm -mm. Because I, I, I ran some ideas around people when I was starting my businesses. And I've had some feedback and I was like, you're a hater. I'll regret even mentioning this to you. Yes. So I make moves now. I don't even, I don't even ask nobody nothing. I don't, I stop asking people outside. I'm not asking nobody nothing. No more. I'm just doing it. You'll see it when it's out. Yep. And you have to get like that because yep. people are always going to try to talk you out of something. Even if you think like they're close to you, yep. they are still going to try to talk you out of stuff because people that ain't doing nothing don't want you to do nothing. Mm -mm. People like to be, you know, you stuck. They want yep. you to stay stuck with them. And I, I'm, you know, we're not magnets. Some, some, somebody got to get the friction off. Like That's you got to separate. Like we yeah. can't do this. We yeah. can't do this. Guys. Um, Brittany says that's awesome. It really has to be your passion. It does have to be your passion. And Veronica says, thank you for your obedience because this has been amazing tonight. You ladies have definitely filled my cup. Oh, see, that's what it's oh, about. Yeah, absolutely. My girl is on here. My daughter, Katrina, says, Mom, you have that fresh bakery loan now. <laughs> oh, yes, she does. The whole bakery. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Aww. Uh, see, like, even my family have noticed, like, the, the difference and the change in me. It's like, I don't react how I used to. I'm just so chill and I'm so nonchalant about a lot of things. I, I literally walk over things that I used to trip over. Like, I, so I don't even walk. I just walk around and around. I used to trip, like, whatever, right? And they're looking at me like, who are you? <laughs> like, because it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. I don't, you don't even have to understand. I know what I had to go through, what I endured. Amen. Okay, Absolutely. So, Keep going. Brittany says stuck people want you to stay stuck with them. Yeah, they sure do. And you know what? Some people are are really staying stuck with people. Yeah. And you know, I, know I, have always, I have always said misery loves company. And please don't invite me to that party because yeah. I am not coming. Don't I'm invite not me to that party. <laughs> Period. Period. So Jackie, I have thoroughly enjoyed this chat. Do you ladies have any questions i thank y'all for hanging out with us for so long because you know what we're not going to do what i don't like to do is rush anything i just let things flow right so um do you guys have any questions before we end this broadcast if you do go ahead and type it in the chat while you're typing it in the chat jackie can you let the, the ladies know how they can um get in touch with you well i have started a facebook group and it's called should have been a book.com the the facebook group is just should have been a book but my blog is should have been a book.com um in the facebook group i put every um time that i post a blog um i just put some uplifting things here and there um but i really want to get as many people putting their eyes on my blog and being part of the facebook group so i would love for everybody out there to join if you haven't already joined um, check out the blog, comment on the blog, 
Um, that's what I'm here for. I want to share. I want to exchange. I want to laugh. I want to encourage. I want to uplift. I want to do all the things. And so if you could just come and follow my um, Facebook group um, and then follow the blog. Like I said, I put my link on the Facebook group. Every time I post something, you'll know there when I post. I usually post about two to three times a week. Um, but just come in there and, and following and supporting and maybe commenting would be, would be perfect. That's and I awesome. appreciate everyone's time. I didn't realize it was eight 30, you know, now that's, that's like, Oh, I got to go. I got to go to bed here. I got my, I'm uh, glad when you're having fun though. And when you really I are know, in your purpose, I, know. I you feel know like we've only been talking for like 15 minutes. It's been right. like an hour and a half. What in we the world? Recoup this time. Well, don't you worry because you know, time is our, our most precious asset that we have. It's the most valuable thing that we have. Once we spend it, we can't recoup it. That's so right. to sow your time into someone else, don't think for one second, God ain't about to bless you. So we're going to receive, you guys are going to receive because you gave us your time. We gave you your time. Like, yo, it's it's an ROI. It's a return on your investment. You That's sow, right. you reap. You sow, you reap. So we all being all of us are blessed on this line today. You guys just watch. And when it happened, I want you to come back and tell me. Come back and tell me. Oh, I just want to say I appreciate and I'm just joking. Um about the time. I'll stay here till midnight if I have to, because I'm so <laughs> passionate about it. And I love talking with Natasha. Um, and I just appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart, taking the time to just sit and, and be part of this tonight, because I think that it was a great conversation. Um, I hope that we've inspired a little bit um, for you to think about how you can step out of your comfort zone and get outside that box and be bold and have that godly boldness every single day of your life. Right. That's I love that. It's great advice, Jackie. You, you're, you're always you've always been so encouraging um, since the day I met you um, and just so full of love and light. And that's why I just love you. Um, Brittany wants to know what's Jackie's advice to someone who was meek to become more bold? You know what? Baby steps. Like I said, we can't all just go out there and change the world and quit the job and do all the things. So look at the, sm the small things in your life that you can do, whether it's, I'm going to be bold today and I'm going to try a different food that I've never tried before. Or I've been a little shy with a relationship or with my marriage. And I, I don't really communicate exactly my needs or how I'm feeling. Maybe you, you start speaking up a little bit and um, changing that communication style. Um, it really is about taking the little small things if you're meek and mild and stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, and like I said, it could be maybe you've never worn the color blue. Maybe you want to be bold and wear blue or maybe red or put that red lipstick on or slide on a heel or Whatever it is that you have never done, just to say, you know what, I'm going to step out. I'm going to be bold. Um, maybe go out to dinner by yourself. Some mm -hmm. people find great freedom in that. Taking yourself to get a pedicure. Maybe you don't take the time to have that self-care like you should. Um, those baby steps are going to are going to like light your little world on fire. And you're going to say, you know what? OK, I've done this. What else can I do? What right. other changes can I do mm -hmm. um, in every area of your life? But sometimes we have to start small because, like I said, I've been at this for uh, many years and um, it's, it's a process. It is a process until you get like to, you know, Natasha's point where she was like, I'm I'm done. This is the big, bold step that I'm making. And she just went forward. But we don't all start there. You know, some of us have to take those baby steps and start super small. Listen, now, you just gave some really great advice. All of that. I hope you guys like go and watch the replay if you didn't catch all of that, because that was some really good points and um, tips. It's the baby steps. Start small. Do something new. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Um, I love all of what you just said, like even doing a new color, shaving your head, like size, you want to shave your yes. side like me. I'm telling you, Coco Chanel said a woman who shaved her, uh, cut her hair is about to change her life. 
And that was one of my bold moves um, when I shaved my sides and when I got my hair locked and I stopped wearing the weave and I stopped wearing the wigs. Those were my bold moves when I stopped wearing the makeup. I really came into my authentic self. Now, I don't even like having makeup on my skin. Yeah. Like I, I don't want anything on my skin now. Um, so those were all part of my bold moves. And like, I, I don't, you know, like you said, leaving the, the employer. That was not without it. Struggles, guys. Like Jackie said right. in the beginning, he ain't saying go leave your job. But if God is saying go leave, you know, you follow God. That's but I, 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 that was the, that was my, my next level of, that was like round two of the struggle. I was in it and now I was out of it in a struggle. And so it took me two years to get through the burnout and the healing and just to, you know, just to sit with God for those two years. And then it was time. Yep. It was time to start back up again. And this is where I am now. So guys, I have been making, you know, every day is something new for me. This is bold for me to do, to come on here and do this because a dream is to of mine. And I wrote this years ago. I have a name is to have my podcast too. And I feel like this is the beginning of it. Um, but this is out of my comfort zone. I don't like being live at all. You guys may not be able to tell. I don't like limelight. I don't like spotlight. I don't like the camera. The camera loves me, honey. But <laughs> I, I can <laughs> listen, I can do without it. But yeah. this is what's required of me now. That's right. So now I have to show up. And every time I do, it's just like God just takes me higher and higher in it and it's like you do belong here you do belong here and they have you have what it takes and you have what they need jennifer said um this is awesome so good for my heart and soul love you both i love you too girlfriend you have the best week burps <laughs> jackie um Brittany said gems you know Brittany. i'm always drop these gems honey um i suffer for them <laughs> <laughs> Jack, too. You suffer for some too. Um, Miss ha- Miss Evelyn, you guys will hear me call her powerhouse. She says, um, good night, be bold, love it. I just told someone today that they had to be bold. This is just confirmation. Thank you. Miss Evelyn is an amazing woman in her community. I'm just gonna shout her out. Aww. She does a lot of stuff, she feeds the hungry. Um, Miss Evelyn is a really amazing woman in her community. She has, I've never met Miss Evelyn, but Miss Evelyn is very supportive. And so Miss Evelyn, for everything that you do, I'm glad that I am able to come on here with, with my girls and, you know, be a blessing to you in, in a way that you can receive it in your home on a Sunday night. So thank That's you right. for being here. Thank you for everything that thank you do. You. And for those who are in need, and I pray that God just fills your cup in a way that you just really just cannot receive it. So Jackie, now the ladies know how to contact you. You guys know how to follow me right here in this group. Um, this week coming, I will not be on on Sunday, um, but I will be doing this next Friday night. And I have an amazing guest. And I've extended these um, into April. And the lineup is is, is sick. <laughs> You said good, right? And yeah. look, I just wanted to be done with March. And he's like, keep going. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, like, I'll do that. I'm like, Ugh. and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get on it. And so like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, get out of the way. I don't want to do this, guys. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I- and you know what? And this was my first time ever. And I was like, I really don't want to do it. I, this is not my jam. I'd rather be behind my computer doing my blog thing. Um, so definitely out of my comfort zone tonight. And and again, my little step of being bold. But when your sister asks you to come on, you come on. So no hesitation. No God to pray. No God willing. No hemming and hawing. I'm here. When do you need me? What you are, I love you for that, and thank you because there was a time where both of us would be like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that, and mean it. A no, hard no. I don't want to see my forehead wrinkles all up in this thing. Uh uh-uh. but here so I am. I'm- I love you guys. Thank you again for tuning in tonight. Um, I pray, Jackie and I pray that this really blessed you. Um, check back on Friday. Um, I'm gonna do it next Friday um, at four o'clock with my Be Free Friday. I'm gonna have a chat. Um, I have a really amazing guest. You guys are going to love her when you see her, just like all the other amazing ladies that I've had on. Thank you so much, Jackie, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your sistership. Thank you for never switching up. <laughs> um, ladies, if you don't have any more questions, we're going to let you get on with your evening. 
um, go be bold. Be bold. That's Jackie's thing. Go be bold. be bold. Go do the thing. Be bold. Be free. And go do all the things because you awesome. absolutely can do all the things, right? Through Christ who strengthens right. you. Um, ladies, have a great work week. If you're bossed up at home, have a great boss week. Get them income tax papers done like I have to finish tomorrow. And you guys just have an amazing week. Go kill it. Go crush it. Go go chase your dreams. My, my girlfriend, Wendy, she says, chase your dreams and run as fast as you can. That is her quote. That's Wendy Massey's quote. Like, you guys, go after. Like Jackie said, go get it. Go get yours. Go get yours. Because ain't nobody coming to bring it to you. You got to go not you? Why not you? And on that note, we are out of here. Bye, guys. Out of here. Love you guys. Have a great evening and a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.